hi, I wanted to come in and talk to um, black people and white people just in general, especially my black and white Christians. I just wanted to talk to you. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you this video and then I will come back. The Bible is Black History explores DNA evidence and the work of historians and scientists to prove that black people were part of the Israelite community in the Bible. The book claims the world's first man, identified as Adam, was a black man from Africa. My next guest is the book's author. Dr. Theron Williams is a pastor in Indianapolis and a Detroit native. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. So this is fascinating research. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, this is something that I've heard people say mm -hmm. for a long time, right? Sure. Uh, that that black people were are part of uh, the original human uh, tribes, uh, including in the Bible. But but the idea of trying to prove that through uh, DNA and records, I think, gives it an added dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the book advances the notion that the people who made up the Israelite communities, both in the Old and New Testament, were people of color, namely black people. Uh, we know that the world's first man, that the father of modern humans, uh, was a black man in East Africa. Uh, DNA evidence bears that out. In fact, the National Geographic Society, along with IBM, came together and they put together the genographic project. Mm -hmm. It was headed by Dr. Spencer Wells and it concluded in 2005. It was a 10 year uh, study and they went worldwide, Dr. Spencer Wells and his team, collecting DNA evidence um, from indigenous communities worldwide. Um, and they wanted to find who is the father of modern humans. And so we know women have two X chromosomes and men have an X and a Y chromosome. So they studied the Y chromosome and they traced it back 60,000 years to East Africa. And Dr. Uh, Wells and his team concluded that the, um, the first modern human was a black man in um, East Africa, whom the Bible identifies as Adam. Mm -hmm. So we know that through DNA evidence um, and then the descendants of Adam, obviously, uh, would have been black people. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 tell me what made you interested uh, well, in it, this subject. What, what made me interested, Stephen, is that in the black church, we were having a defection of African-American young people, millennials. And I was trying to figure out why were they defecting yeah, where they from going, the church right? and where are they going <laughs> and why are they leaving, you know. It wasn't like my generation. I'm a baby boomer. You know, we, we came to church and we didn't ask many questions or anything. Yeah, You just did it because you were supposed we to. We did it because we were supposed to, you know. And But this generation of millennials are now asking questions. You know, um, they're questioning the efficacy of the church. They're questioning the authenticity of the scripture. They're questioning the historicity of Jesus. And the church has not answered those questions adequately enough. And so this was a study. It started off as a study, particularly for my millennials at our, at, at our church. Um, and it turned into a nine month study. And then that study turned into a book. So it was as if the millennial generation pushed me into writing this book. Yeah. Uh, what lessons other than sort of the obvious connection uh, to, to modern African and African-American people. Uh, what lesson do you, do you feel we should draw from this evidence, this, this proof that, that black people were among uh, the, these early tribes of, mm -hmm. of humans? Well, it's, it's empowering, you know, because it contradicts the traditional notion that the people of the Bible, uh, from Adam all the way to Jesus, were people of European descent. Um, and that's just not true. That's just not factual. And so it's empowering to a community to look in the biblical text and see themselves as a part of salvation history, not sitting on the sideline waiting for someone else to win salvation for us, yes. but that people of African descent were actually the authors of salvation history, which draws 
the African American reader into the story because right. part of me is in the story. That's empowering. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you think about uh, the sort of easy logic of, of some of this truth. I mean, if you think about where life begins mm -hmm. uh, and sort of what part of the world most of the Bible takes place in, mm -hmm. uh, if you go there even now, mm -hmm. it's not like you see uh, uh, people of European descent there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see people of African and, and Middle Eastern mm -hmm. uh, descent. Uh, and yet, as you point out, all of the stories for forever really have been told as though uh, the, the principal characters are all are all uh, of, of European descent. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. And people raise a question to me, you know, as I lecture around the country on this on this topic, particularly when it comes to the uh, racial makeup of Jesus Christ. People ask, what difference does it make? I mean, he died for our sins. He's the savior of the world. And the answer is that that's the wrong question. What difference does this color make? That's the wrong question. The question is, since we know that Jesus Christ was not a Scandinavian because he's depicted as Scandinavian, he's depicted as a European mm -hmm. in the traditional images of Jesus, and we know that he didn't look like that, the question is not what difference does his color made. The question is, why have he been whitewashed? Why have we done that? Why have we allowed that? That's that, uh, that's the question yeah. that we that we should be pursuing. It, yeah. uh, Jesus was a human being, a historical figure, mm -hmm. and he bore the indigenous physical characteristics of his community. Of the other people from that area, yeah, right? He <laughs> is a historical reality, and so to negate his color to negate his racial composition is to negate part of who he is because his race, the way he looked, is a part of his ontological being. It's a part of him. So you can't separate Christ from his ethnicity, from his color, and say you are accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. You either accept all of him or you don't accept him at, at all. And we don't have the luxury to say that I am going to conform Christ into a color that's comfortable for me. Right. right. You can't do that. Yeah. So for anyone that may have had doubt as far as where life began, that God first created life in Africa, you see a white man, Dr. Spencer Wells, went out looking for the truth and found the truth that the first human being was created in Africa and his name was Adam. So life started in Africa. The, the story of the Bible is taking place in Africa. And you see a lot of the people in the story are people who, who are black, you know, even though that terminology wasn't used by God because that terminology was created um, by the elites and here in America to distinguish black and white. So there will always be that friction. They created that terminology. That's why I always say my Christianity come before my skin color. It's important, especially young black men to know you're, you know, as black people throughout generation once slavery was over, we was on a constant search for who are we, who are we? The Bible has always been there telling you who you are, telling you the power that you have, telling you the education, the knowledge that you have, because it started in Africa. So that has always been there. But the, the white supremacists have taught you to hate your creator to hate the person who created you, to hate the person who educated you, to hate the person who showed that, that salvation, that you was part of that story, you end up hating because of the white supremacists. That had nothing to do with God. They chose to go against God in order to have slavery. And that also speaks to the white people, um, the generation 
I stated this before in another video, that before that lie was ever told to black people, as far as God wanted them to be slave as, and, and they're less superior than white people, they had to tell the white people that first. They had to sell that lie to the white people first. So in the past, y'all, the white ancestors, y'all ancestors bought into that lie, despite what the Bible was saying, because they had the whole Bible. The Bible was take, taken apart in order to, you know, make black people feel that they was less superior and that they um, God wanted them to be slaves. So that had to be told to the white people first. They accepted that. So that was passed down. That hate was passed down from generation to generation to generation. So as white people, you have to ask yourself, can you truly and do you truly accept the truth of the Bible itself? Because if you're walking around with hating your heart for black people, you're hating God's creation. You're hating the beginning of life. All life started with Adam and Eve. And y'all and y'all are hating that. So therefore, you're hating what God created. And then for black people, when you sit there and you look at your skin color. When you sit and you look at your hair and you hate that and you're, you're trying to buy, buy products that are going to make you lighter because you feel that being lighter is better. Ask God what was better. Ask God what he created first. We don't know why God did it, but he did it for a reason. He did it the way he did for a reason. That's why I always say my Christianity comes before my skin color. From the beginning, even though I wasn't knowledgeable about the Bible and I had all the information, I remember someone asked me when I was um, a teenager, they asked me, do you believe the Bible? And I said, yes, I believe the Bible. And it was like, no, no, no. Do you believe that everything in the Bible is true? And I was like, yeah, I believe the Bible from the first, you know, from the first beginning of the Bible all the way to the end. I believe everything that's in the Bible happened. And that's truly in my heart, even though I was naive about the Bible, even though I didn't fully understand everything that was that was being said in the Bible. My feeling about God, my feeling about Jesus, my feeling about the Bible has never changed. I have always loved God. That's why I come on this platform and I, I say, you know, and I speak up about Christianity and trying to get people to understand Christianity is the first religion. Christianity is the true religion. If you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you would get to heaven. Jesus said himself, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. If you deny me before men, I would deny you before your father. So it's very important that you know the truth. And I always say, read the Bible for yourself. Read and study the Bible. If you can't read or you have trouble reading, listen to the Bible. And, and get an understanding of the story of the Bible. Like I said, the Bible tells the story from how you should live your life from the beginning all the way to the end and don't have you know a lot of things we know about the bible we got from other people we allow other people to tell us what was in the bible but you have to read it for yourself and pray to god for discernment while you're reading the bible and then black men you know we have always been lost read the bible and see how you should conduct yourself as a man as a black man how you should should treat your kids, how you should provide for your kids, how you should take care of your kids. And then if you're going to do it the right way, you get married before you have kids. A man who finds a good wife. So therefore, the woman that you choose has to be a godly woman, has to be the woman that understands what it is that how God wants a woman to be. And the only way you're going to know that is by reading the Bible.
So it has always been right there in front of us. But we are so stuck on what everyone else is seeing instead of staying focused on Jesus. So I just wanted to share that information with you. My name is Delmarche. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share, and subscribe.